Good afternoon, YouTube, vinyl community, audiophiles, music lovers, and interested parties everywhere. Going to do a little short room tour today. I'm not sure how short it will be, but it's going to primarily just relate to my digital audio setup. I'll do, uh, there's my primary station, which uh, I've shown in a video before, slightly different setup. I'm going to scan the room slightly so that you can see my main hi-fi system. I'm standing right behind the sweet spot chair. When I film this, uh, Marantz 2275 receiver, been all redone sounds great and uh, I've shown parts of this before and I'll do a room tour where I go into this more later. Uh, to the left of the receiver on the bottom is a just recently acquired by me a week or so ago Cambridge CD Transport. Not a CD player, CD Transport. I'll mention that more lately. And on top of that is kind of the heart of this system is a older PS audio super high quality DAC. I bought this used for about a third of the price of what a new one cost. Uh, it was well worth the money and so you don't have to spend a ton of money and uh, these things do make a difference uh, when you're listening on the big system like this. Uh, listening on uh, my little computer system, you probably can't tell the difference one thing from another. And with that said, I uh, got an iMac 27 inch Dynaudio uh, near field powered studio monitors, uh, Apogee Quartet, I've shown this before, digital audio interface, real high quality DACs microphone preamps and uh, the speakers are real good they're real accurate accurate uh, they're good uh, for mixing and that kind of thing but you don't get the full effect of the music like you do on this other system and uh, I've got lots of uh, tracks burned onto the computer for CDs. Been doing that long as you've been able to do it. Uh, I like to listen to those because uh, I can listen to what I want quickly and easily and on the screen here is J River software which plays all the stuff but uh, it's maybe one of the things that may be necessary for high-res digital downloads to play those and I'll show you just a little bit about that. So going from the computer over here to where the DAC is, originally uh, I had uh, RCA cables coming out of the Apogee. On the floor down there I had the DAC and then RCA cables from the DAC going over here where the amp is. Well, why was that? Well. My audio guy told me that RCA cables running longer than 10 feet, you have some potential problems. Of course, it didn't look good with cables strung around the floor anyway. So, uh, I uh, then had a USB and uh, had the DAC in the same place and so forth. And that worked okay. And I had read someplace that uh, USB cables longer than, I think, 12 feet, 6 inches. There's potential problems, cable interference, different things. Uh, I know how the uh, USB packets work. But uh, so I got a new 5-meter, uh, which is a little over 16 feet USB cable. And I spent a couple bucks, not the big money, but just enough to get a quality cable because I got a long run on this thing. I'm playing high-res files. And the cable's long enough, I set the DAC on top of the transporter before I got that on this cabinet. So now the cables strung around the floor don't look as bad as they do. Uh, the sound quality is fantastic and I'm very happy with this. Uh, just in the last week or two got this Cambridge CD transport not a player it doesn't have a DAC in it 
high quality transport and it has uh, digital spit of out or optical out and it's going into the dock there and uh, one of the good things about this if you get a cd player you have an old one you got whatever DAC is in it which probably out of date not maybe that good but having the transport here it's going into a real high quality DAC and not just that if uh, technology changes to where we can get a better one or I decide I want a different one or something, I can just switch the DACs and the CD transport is still going fine and I've been very happy with that. So uh, that's basically the heart of my digital, digital system and uh, apologize for the handheld iPhone camera here, but uh, Sat in my chair here. I spent a lot of time here. Watch movies. I can run the sound through the good system behind me. Watch YouTube videos. I can listen on the good system. Or I can just switch over and listen on this. And it works very good. And it's very convenient. Uh, probably have around 18,000 tracks uh, in iTunes that I've ripped from CDs. And I haven't counted here, uh, probably got a thousand high-res downloads. And uh, what's the reason for doing that? Uh, analog sounds better. Well, it can sound better. Sometimes it sounds better. Of course, oftentimes it sounds worse because of the system, the source material. And uh, one of the things that kind of convinced me here uh, I've got a tune. I got Led Zeppelin II first track loaded up. I'm only going to hit it for a few seconds here. Yeah, see, I can sit here at the computer. I can control the volume. I can start and stop, fast forward. I can do all the things. A high quality file. Uh, what got me going on this was watching the videos about uh, the original of this that was uh, mastered with RL and the Dead Wax. Most of uh, the vinyl community is all familiar with that. The best sounding one, there's lots of different versions. It's been remastered and it's recently been remastered, which is all from digital. Uh, well, if we're going to get a new a record that was done from uh, digital maybe I should just get a digital to start with and so I decided to do that here with this I've, been, I've got other a lot of other ones I've been very happy with that I looked on Discogs you want to get Led Zeppelin 2 with RL and the Dead Wax in really good shape you're looking at about four hundred dollars well there's no record on earth I'm going to pay four hundred dollars for so high-res download works good. Well, yeah, uh, uh, there's tons of them floating around the country. They made millions of copies. Most of them are beat. Most of them are worn. There's so many different versions been done over the years. You could darn near spend your life trying to figure out which one to get. And if that was the one that you found in a record store, no. Oh, just sat here, go click, click, got the high-res download. I can enjoy the music and... Uh, that's the end of that process. Yeah, I enjoy the digging, the looking, the hunting, and so forth, but uh, when you get something special or something uh, you're going to enjoy more often, this works real good. So uh, I'm going to shoot a couple more little uh, parts to this video, and I'll string them together here, and uh, I hope there is something in here. Uh, that you will get a little enjoyment out of. Uh, coming up, I'm going to talk about streamers. Uh, do you need a streamer? Do you want a streamer? Uh, should anybody have a streamer? Um, a lot of the VC probably don't even know what a streamer is. I'm not sure that I know what it is, but I'm going to talk about it anyway. So I uh, hope uh, you're enjoying the video today, folks. Thank you. So what is a music streamer, uh, it says here on one, high-res music player. The other one over here says, wickedly great digital player. Well, these more expensive streamers that maybe have a CD transport, maybe have a hard drive in them, 
the best I can tell, they're just pretty much computers without a monitor. Maybe you got a little crummy CD screen or something in there. They do various things. But uh, you can get all of your music in here. You can maybe go online and uh, get titles, which is high-res streaming a lot of people are doing. And I looked at these uh, before I just uh, got a nice good USB cable hooked up to a good DAC and running out of my computer here. Everything's on the computer when I uh, get files and so forth. This is the first place they go. So even if you have one of these, you got the problem of keeping it up to date and keeping all your new music on it and so forth. And uh, I know these are quite popular and I'm not going to talk about them a lot here. Some of you are probably not familiar with them at all. But we'll just show a little bit here. Uh, here's the Cambridge. You can read what it says there. So how much is it? Well, it's a thousand dollars. Has Bluetooth, most of them do. Has a DAC built in and so forth. So there you are again that uh, you got certain components locked in. But here this NAD M50.2 high-res music player, streamer, Build-in CD ripper, 4 terabyte internal storage, uh, blue OS control, meaning uh, all of these things you can control from your smartphones. But uh, you'll notice this baby is $4,000. Well, that's about twice what a real good iMac costs. And it comes with a 27-inch monitor, a keyboard, and a mouse. Uh, so, me personally, uh, I'm not really getting the need for these. Now, maybe with the wife acceptance factor, you can't have a big 27-inch computer in the living room, maybe where the stereo is. So, these things can be put down in the cabinet and that kind of thing. But, uh, in general... What these streamers do is just what the computer does. Now, I'm just showing these two pages, a $1,000 and a $4,000 one. Uh, this is on Audio Advisor Mail Order Catalog. I like these guys. I've been getting their catalogs for years. Uh, there, if you flip the page here, uh, I think there's some that's $400. There's eight hundred dollars. Uh, there's different prices. They're not all the same. Depends how many features they have and so forth. So, here's one for four ninety nine. The Oralic Aries Mini Streamer. Uh, some of you guys use these uh, Raspberry Pi things. Some people use the Mac Mini computer to do the same thing just without the monitor and so forth. Uh, <clears throat> I like the convenience of sitting in this chair having a real keyboard and a real mouse and a screen big enough that I can see what's on it without a magnifying glass. Just my opinion. Uh, that's it. It's free. That's what it was worth. So I uh, hope maybe this uh, enlightened a few people a little bit or give you a little something to think. The next little part of the video here I'm going to show you is uh, why having the digital setup is so important to me even though I got tons of records and a nice analog setup. Uh, there must be another reason, you yeah? Here's uh, one of the records uh, I really like, Melody Gardot, my one and only thrill for the first time on 45 RPM, 180 gram, mastered by Bernie Grunman, a great record, I love this record. Well, I have the CD also, so what's the deal here with the digital, okay? The one tune on here called Lover Undercover is a tune I love. And without exaggeration, I've listened to that track over the last couple years 
more than 150 times. Uh, maybe a few of you guys, when you were kids down in the basement, you listened to a record 150 times. But uh, that would be a pretty rare occurrence for an adult today. It wouldn't be convenient to play that record. And of course, uh, that many times it would sound like hell unless you had two or three of them. The other thing about this, it makes it mobile. I not only can just listen digital on my computer here, I have down here my classic iPod, which is 128 gig. Got 18,000 tracks in there. There's room for plenty more. I don't think you can buy these anymore. I don't listen to this on earbuds. I only plug it into the car system, particularly on a long trip. Put the favorites on shuffle and just listen all day long. So here's why I like digital. If I like a piece of music that I'm going to listen to it more than two or three times, uh, I want to be able to have quick, easy access. Okay, what's my newest favorite? Getting the glare off of that sticker, Lynn Stanley. I showed this recently as one of my potential records of the year, albums of the year, Moonlight Sessions, Volume 1. This is a one-step process, 180 gram, 45 RPM, limited it to 2,000 copies and they are because of the one-step process they are $99 okay uh, I love this album she has four albums I have all of them but in particular on the first record there's two records in here on the first one side two in my video I mentioned my funny Valentine uh, one of the, just a, a great recording and one of the finest recordings of a piano and I'm a piano guy that I've ever heard. I've already played that record enough times people come by listening to it myself that that expensive record is starting to get a little noisy. Yeah, I can go clean it and so forth, but uh, if you're going to listen to a record uh, many times you want to be able to get it in your car on your iPod your iPad your phone or whatever you need to have a digital setup to do this and yep the vinyl sounds great on my system but uh, it would take some serious critical listening uh, to hear the digital version just recently picked up the SACD uh, and uh, my CD transport over there, as far as I know, doesn't even play SACDs, but this is a, it's a combo CD. That's the only way it's available. Yep, I got this. I can play it all the times that I want, and I don't have to worry about sound degradation or wearing out a $100 record. Her previous three records are all audiophile records, uh, 45 RPM. Her previous record was called uh, Interludes. Just picked up the SACD. Her record previous to that, which really got her going, was the record called Potions, uh, music from the 50s. And boy, this is really terrific and a lot of variety on here. A lot of variety in the arrangements and the instrumentation. It's not just the same guys in the band all the time. She's using the stop, top studio musicians and the first one called Romance. So, you know, if you want to preview these things, I've talked about that being a bad habit because maybe we don't listen to the record all the way through. But I'm tickled to death to get these on CD. I can sit here, not in the sweet spot, but in this chair in front of the computer. And if there's a few tunes I want to really listen to or listen to again, I'm happy to have them on digital. And uh, I don't know what my uh, proportion or ratio is now, but uh, where my... Uh, listening used to be 98% digital uh, maybe it's just down to 50% now maybe even less than 50% hard to say but yeah 
I love sitting in the sweet spot and listening to these good records, but we don't always have the time or the energy to do that, and the digital is convenient and it sounds great. So you guys that are anti-digital, maybe give it a try. Thanks for watching. Sounds pretty darn good, even on an iPhone, doesn't it? Now, I got a little postscript here that I left off of my video. If high-res downloads and various digital sound so great, why did I get a CD transport? Well, one of the things I've discovered here in the last year or so with a little experimentation a CD, regular music CD, played on a CD player or transport through your amp sounds better than playing the file back from the computer. It's not a huge difference on the little speakers on each side of the computer. You're probably not ever going to notice it. But uh, when you play it back through a system like this, you can hear the difference. And I got several thousand CDs, so I'm in the process of getting them organized. If I want a quick listen, I listen to the file that's on the computer, but if I want to sit down and enjoy an album I have on CD and maybe don't have on vinyl, I needed this CD transport, and uh, $449, not a lot of money, you can buy a whole CD player for that, but you got top quality here and uh, with the external DAC in the future it's you can just upgrade it uh, until the thing wears out uh, it should go forever so that's why I got this CD transport because the music sounds better played from the CD player than it does from the computer so see y'all later <laughs>